This episode of Old School Sessions is brought to you by Diesel Freak. Me and Carla was with me, and I think Digger, anyway, we loaded up there. You remember Jackie at Belford? Oh, yeah. Uh, sure well, he was up there, and he was supposed to load some chocolate candy. We got out there and found a place there in New York City, and uh, I thought it was chocolate candy, but it came out to be a load of chemicals, and it was going to Mark Marietta. And so anyway, I went ahead and I loaded it, you know. Back then, you didn't need to have hazmat and all that stuff, clappers, so yeah. they hand me a handful of placards. Oh, you're sticking placards on so there? I stuck them placards up in the bunk. Here we come. We come through the Chesapeake Bay and Tunnel and everything else. And the first drop was in Ocala. And Belford's office is up there in Ocala. So anyway, I went in there and dropped the trailer there on instead of dragging it all the way to Orlando. I pulled them placards out and I started sticking them on the back door. So on the way home, I had it up there and I was speeding. Highway Patrol, he jumped across the medium strip and he pulled me over. Well, what the, the tag I had on with the sticker, the sticker was registered to my El Camino. And yes. Carla just whited out and redone that because you'd have a copy of the mm -hmm. registration. And I was going to be honest with you, I was going to tell myself, you know, it, it, it ain't legal. Well, I'm not worried about that right there. And he's just writing me out a speed. He was worried more about the speeding ticket. So anyway, we come home, and over the weekend, I went back up there to hook up the trailer, and I was out there hooking up the trailer. The old safety man come out there, you know. What do you got in here? Well, all them placards on here. I said, some kind of hazmat shit, I don't know. <laughs> he said, you got to get that thing off this lot. <laughs> he says, we don't have, you know, we can't haul Yeah, they, they didn't have the they didn't to haul hazmat, hazmat, right? right. Well, who'd you get this load from? I said, Jackie, give it to me. <laughs> well, I think Jackie got in trouble. Yeah. But it took me two months to get money. Yeah. I had to make out a bunch of logs where they could go through another company to, for me to get paid. Yeah. Oh, there's some chemicals on there they say if they would have mixed If it, they would have mixed it, it would have blown up. Yeah. Yeah. Cattle, yeah. 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 If it had a leak and it mixed <laughs> in together. I had a story with you. We was coming back. Me and me used to come back from San Antonio that load on. Oh, yeah. And we run back there all the way until we got to Florida. Yeah, because you couldn't scale it there in Texas. And you were heavy, too, but the DOT guy, he was kind of nice, but we got off there to leave, and we run over to 90. Mm -hmm. And we made the turn, he was sitting there. Well, he yeah. got me and pulled me over, we went, he took me back over to the scale. That's right, you were, I, I think I hooked to your trailer. We might have switched trailers. Well, I think we had switched trailers, because that was legal. Or something. I told the DOT that we got over the scale, yeah, I pulled up on the scale, he walked out there, he goes, you know you're about 4,000 pounds over? Like, no, I said, I didn't know that. So we waited out there and we had no trouble coming across here. So he went in, road ticket and all that. And then he asked me, was that truck in front of me? Was, really, he, was he running with you? Was he heavy too? I said, yeah, you had better luck with him. Because, man, he was, he just made a big day out of him. <laughs> he just had her look at me and give me a dirty look. I said, but he got away. <laughs> but I, I was legal with the J-Bro, man. Yeah. Here at Diesel Freak, located in Gaylord, Michigan, just an hour south of Mackinac Bridge. We offer the parts, turbos, manifolds, injectors, fleet service, down to your owner operator. We have customers with race applications. We have a dyno for diagnostics. What we like to do along with our own apparel is make apparel for others as well. Hats, t-shirts, decals, vehicle graphics. From mild to wild for your truck, here at Diesel Freak. I got stopped up there in Rocky Mount, North Carolina. It was on a Sunday morning, and I had a load of orange juice, but there was 6,000 pounds of raw peanuts, 100 pound bags, that also was carrying on there that they had to be returned. So I was bumping it up there, I don't know, 82, 83,000 pounds. And everybody at 2 o'clock in the morning, scales are closed. And boy, I seen that DOT car shoot off right there at the ramp and the scales up there. He ran up there at 100 mile an hour and turned them lights on and I had to pull in there. So he got me for overweight on the axles, over bridge law, over this and that. And I had to take him 600 some dollars there. I had to call Comcheck and get a number and pay him. So I tried to be nice about it. You know, I've already now 600 some dollars, so I'm not doing good carrying him extra peanuts, right? <laughs> but I've said it to him, uh, so I said, well, I'm going up here to Norfolk. I said, now look, I'm just a little one-man owner-operator here. And I said, man, I can't afford this. You know that. I said, so when I come back, I'm going up there to Norfolk, and I'm picking up a load of cocoa beans. I knew I was going to take one. I was going to Salinas, California. 
but I didn't tell him that. I said, and I'm going to Miami. So when I come down here to make up the difference, instead of 82, 83,000, I'll probably be topping about 90,000 pounds. <laughs> he said, so when you see me, flag me through. <laughs> he looked at me and said, do what? Flag you through. I said, yeah, just like that. Don't just like that. He says, I can't do that. I said, it's the only way I can make up for the $600 I paid you is to make more money. He said, don't worry about nothing. Nobody will know but me and you. I said, just flag me through. I can't flag you through. <laughs> Last I see him, when I went out there, I smiled. I'm going, I know you're going to flag me through <laughs> like that. And I went, uh, no, I wasn't coming back that way. You know? no, but yeah. just, you know, hey, you know, they do things, so you have to make the best of it. You laugh yeah. and go on down Mississippi the road. Mississippi used to be running 73 through 80. And I had a cab over for oh, yeah. and I had a load of fruit. I was going to I think New Orleans or somewhere out there. And anyway, got out there. And I weighed, and I was heavy on the back, so I had orange boxes in the front seat of the truck on the jump side of a cab over, right? And I pulled up on the scales, you know, because a lot of times what you could do, you could just roll across your front axle and just weigh your drives in your trailer, right? And he pulled me around back. You know, and he could see the box of oranges <laughs> Loaded all on the front seat. <laughs> I walked in there and said, son, he says, I think you're a box of fruit over. <laughs> I said, I'll be right back. And I went in there and he said, told me to set it behind the, the door, right? And he went ahead and he wrote me on the back of the ticket. He just signed his name. He said, when you get on the other side, just show that at the scale master. What are you bringing back? He said, I think I'm going to load with rice. Oh, we could use some rice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that one up there used to be, what the hell road was that? Was that 78 or something like a 90? I forget what it is. But you run the back road up above 10, parallel with 10, up to Hattiesburg. When you come down to Alabama. Was uh, that 90? 190. It runs through Hattiesburg? 49. Runs through Hattiesburg. 49. No, yeah. not that way. The one run oh, east and west. That was 98, right? Was, was that 98? 98? I yeah. can't remember. Yeah, 98, 98. not 78. Yeah. And uh, anyway, with the, at back in them time, you go in there, it didn't matter how much weight he'd go, oh boy, 2,000 pound over, point of coffee can, feed the kitty, yeah. feed the kitty. <laughs> feed the kitty. So yeah, you, know, you go over there and put like $10 in there, or now I come through here one time, it's like 87,000 pounds with potatoes in uh, Colorado, and uh, same thing, uh, boy, we sure are using fresh potatoes here in, in Mississippi. I'll, I said, I think I'm a bag over. <laughs> but I went out there, got him a 50 pound bag of potatoes, Keep carried it in there. Yeah. Yep. So things were different. Yeah. Were a lot different back then. They, yeah. all they didn't carry guns, they weren't out to shoot you. You know, <laughs> and they had fun. It was, they didn't have yeah. a pickup truckload of goods stacked up inside the scale house by the time their shift was over. <laughs> oh, yeah. So what I'm hearing is if they seen something that was good on your truck that they could make use of. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. If giving you a ticket, they would ask for a free sample. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. it, mostly it was with owner operators. Yeah, they, I mean, like I say, you know, it, if it's, it's a big a company, different. they figure the company's got money. So you know, know send a truck out, let them feed, get a remember ticket. Remember the Florida plants that you have building? That have oh, plant? yeah. Well, it's going out of Florida up there, to, up there at 90, there for you to leave. Mm -hmm. And it was what in the scale house, it was an ag station. Mm -hmm. And I pulled in there, and he wanted to, you know, you never got checked, you had one master sheet that they looked at, and he didn't think nothing, you know, they never thought anything about it. Well, he wanted me to bring in all the envelopes with all the... Wanted to see the agriculture stamp. Yeah, wanted to see all the stamp. Well, there was one bill laden that didn't have the stamp on it. And it was like for five plants, five 10-inch plants, right? Oh, I can't let you go, you're going to turn around and go back. He said, you want me to go all the way back for five damn plants? He said, yeah, I, ain't, I can't let you go through. I said, okay. So I said, I'll be right back. So I just walked out there, and he followed me out there. And I opened up the door, pulled out five, five plants. plants. <laughs> <laughs> I said, here they are. <laughs> They're not Shut going the nowhere. door. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I tell you how I used to get back in, years ago, you had to, you had to buy fuel in Mississippi. Yeah. Mississippi would. You know, they come down hard on you. And if you was, if, what, what we always done, what Dad used to do, and I did the same thing, is you just stop and buy fuel. And when you pull your front wheels, because they had just, just them little axle skates, they didn't have the big platform skates. Right. So you'd pull your steering axle up to pull the brake on, you get out, and they had a little old peephole window, and you'd slide your fuel receipt in there, mm -hmm. 
and he had it just you know because when you bought fuel the fuel stops had a Mississippi book it was a fuel tax book and they would give you a receipt out of that book and you pull it in there and he'd flip over and stamp it and when he stamped it you'd get back in the truck and you just wouldn't pay no more attention to that light you put it in gear and just start changing gears and rip. Just keep right on rolling. Just roll right on out of the scale like nothing happened. You, would, you wouldn't stop to get your axles weighed no more. You just get him to stamp it and boom, go on out and just keep rolling. That's the way we used to do it. That's the way we did it back flat then. Yeah. You know, we wouldn't we'd be overweight because back then we was home steel it. You could never get a load lighter than 45,000 pounds of steel. You know, a lot of places wanted to put 50 on. If you, you know, because a lot of these companies that buy them lightweight trailers, lightweight. Like Freightliner had your cabs was lighter than everybody else. Mm -hmm. They'd buy them lightweight trucks with aluminum frames. They could scale it, but most guys couldn't afford them aluminum frame trucks. But that's how we did it. We'd get them to stamp that fuel receipt and just take off. The biggest thing with Ag Man, when we school, me and you used to run every week with plants, we learned not to tell them when you pull up, don't tell them you have house plants, don't we tell them you have flowers. If you tell them you have flowers, they would never. See, now I don't mention them. even flowers, I just tell them foliage. Foliage, and you tell them to go ahead because they're just green. You give them house plants, they won't see all envelopes. I tell them had, something that's not off ordinary. I had one of them ask me for a load of plant bills. And, yeah, I don't either. Well, since I got back on the road. I see no reason to go past them. Arizona will give you a pain. Well, Arizona promise. was the biggest pain because you go out there, if you didn't have it, your trailer all sprayed out there and everything. And I had one DOT guy went out there, scale guy. He went out there and he looked. And I said, I always wonder, what are you guys looking for? He said, uh, it's an ant that looks like this. And he had a little plastic thing. And I thought, <laughs> yeah, ants. how easy would it be for him to open that and dump it? If he didn't like you look? Yeah. Well, I, I used to think about that all the time. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> I had to stop me. I took two loads. The first load I went to California. It was a deck load. It was all a reek of palms. Mm -hmm. And when I got to Arizona, they opened up my trailer and they started looking through them and they found a little black ant. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, we're going to have to seal your trailer up and quarantine the truck. I said, what the hell for? He said, we found a, a ant. I said, that little black ant. He said, we got to watch for fire ants. I said, that little son of a gun had done bit you four or five times if it had been a fire ant. <laughs> He said, no he, he half your there. arm off yeah. if he had a so, chance. I was already tired. Now this, I don't know how I got by with it. I was driving that turquoise and white Kenworth. When I got to California, I went down through the median, okay, up on the wrong side of the interstate, and I pulled up on that scale going the wrong way. <laughs> I rode the window down on that Kenworth, and he had his head stuck out the window. And I looked up at him, and he said, what the hell are you doing? I was, I was, you know, going and I had never run out there before. I was, I didn't even know my name, man. I was, I was like a zombie. Felt like a gorilla standing on my head. I was tired. And I looked up through there, and he said, "Get your blankety blank butt back on the right side of the road before I lock your ass up." <laughs> and he sent me on. Well, I missed the scale on the other side. Mm -hmm. And I got on when I got to. In there to Newport Beach, I pulled up to the guy's greenhouse, and the ag man from California was there to meet me because Arizona had called him, and they said to go through the scale. Well, I went through the scale, but it was the wrong one. <laughs> I went through the westbound scale, not the eastbound uh -huh. scale. I, I said, damn, this is the craziest laid out place I've ever seen going down through this dirt and gravel, you know, and, you know. There wasn't no median to me. There wasn't no grass there. You know, I was in the dirt. I said, the hell is crazy drive we've ever seen? And I was on the wrong side of the road, going the wrong way. And I went right on out that scale, and I put back out, and I went right through the median again to get on the right side of the road. Yeah. So you went through the scale. Yeah. Well, so when I got out there, they was there, and they quarantined the man's whole greenhouse. And he happened, I was lucky enough, he had one greenhouse that was empty. Mm -hmm. And he let, you know, he said, we'll let just you have back to put in there. in this greenhouse. And they let me back up and they unloaded that load of plants into that greenhouse. But if he hadn't had that greenhouse, I might have still been sitting there. But I sure did, man. I crossed the median twice and didn't get locked up or take it for it or nothing. And I, I guess the guy thought, this cat's so crazy. He, he's out of his mind. There ain't no need for us to even bother him. 
he thought I must have been higher, you know, the cloud. But then I was well. Like, it wow, doesn't take he, long to learn what they want out yeah. there once you go through that. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, yeah. this as my first trip to California. And yeah. the last next time I went out, I didn't go in that way. I, I didn't even think right it, was 20, it was 20 years or so since yeah. before I went out there again. And I was that that the blue shirt. that blue freight liner, the long hood. Yeah. I took a, uh, took a load for Richard Burks out there to, uh, no, it didn't either, it was for J.C. Uh, C.H. Robinson. Oh, yeah. I took it to Car Target's warehouse out there in Eugene, Oregon. Well, yeah. Something I funny happened that. to me with California. They came out and they said, all trucking companies that go into California has to take and get the California numbers. So I get this paper and everything. So it may gone all the time quite a bit. I do it right away. Send it away with whatever, the hundred dollars or whatever. And they send me back numbers. Well then I get another notice next the month next month and they said, well, disregard the previous notice because this is just for people who have terminals based in California. They have to get numbers. Mm -hmm. And this way the purpose was they send the DOT inspectors to their terminals to inspect their equipment uh -huh. and let them through the scale. I had it made. I had numbers that made it look like I had a terminal in California. <laughs> you was a local man. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. And I, you know, I still have them numbers hidden somewhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it was just by accident that it happened. And you know, within 30 days, oh, we made a mistake. So don't apply for this. Well, it's too late. I, they've already sent me back my paperwork and everything else. They took my $100. <laughs> you know, that's all they cared about. So. But, but it helped me out. You know, I mean, it just, oh, you're local. You know, you're a California-based company. That cured you know? me. I don't know how the guys did it, man. Because I, I got, you know, I was like a zombie when I got out there. And my first wife, she was laying in the sleep. So when we unloaded, I went and got, I picked up a half a load of grapes. They're in Indio, California. Yep. Then I had to come back to Phoenix, and I got a half a load of cantaloupe there, and I was supposed to come on to Jacksonville. I was and picked late. up another half a load? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I was late. I got a I half mean, a load in That sounds town. like something. Yeah. You know. And uh, we get over here close to Jacksonville, a mobile truck that needed a fuel filter. It wouldn't run a 45 mile an hour, and you get the little humps and slow down. I said, I ain't got time to stop and fill it. I'm already late. So I just kept looking. I looked over there, and my girlfriend, she just tears going down her eyes, you know. She goes, what are you trying to do? I said, what's the matter with you? She goes, you're trying to kill yourself. I said, what are you talking about? She says, I've done gone to bed twice, and you're still sitting there driving. <laughs> I said, well, I took a nap while you were sleeping. You know, I pulled over and laid there like we always do. Yeah. Lay, just lay over on the dog box and put your head on that, that little extra cushion on the Right. Cab overs, you know. I said that took me, you know, three or four hours now. Yeah. What I was, I was more worried about my truck trying to quit before I could get to Jacksonville, and it was going to. I can remember it playing that Mobsovich. Mobsovich, yeah. yeah. Oh in yeah, God, yeah. And it's they treated me like us from a third world company because I was, I was, you know, half a day late. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, man, these cats are out of their mind, man. I, I ain't slept but four hours between California and here. Yeah. You know, it was just straight trucking. <laughs> All right, guys, that, that was great um, hearing about uh, the run-ins with uh, law enforcement and everything else. So uh, that'll end it for, for this episode, and uh, we'll pick up on the next one. Do you have trucking veterans in your area that will be willing to sit down and recount some stories from the golden days of trucking? Would you like to host a session at your diner or chrome shop? Or would your business like to sponsor an episode of Old School Sessions? If so, follow the link below and get in contact.